Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be a very important video because in this video we'll be talking about all of the skills that will help you in your career from 26 all the way till 2030 and in the future. See, one thing you have to understand is that the tech industry is always changing. I think the statement holds true for a variety of things in the world, but even more so for the IT industry. Because we have always been changing, the tech stacks have always been changing, the skills have always been changing. Even if you take a look at it historically, we've always been finding new skills, new technologies that work better, that work faster, and we adapt to them. And if you're not upscaling yourself, if you're not evolving with the industry, then you're going to be left behind and you're going to have a lot of difficulty in finding a new job or even maintaining the job that you have. Right. And even more so recently, we've seen a lot of changes because, of course, now we have full blown AI models doing work of 10 developers. You know, it's doing what even a good developer cannot. So, of course, it's even more of a responsibility now for us to change with the time and, you know, learn the skills that will actually help us in our career and in getting the jobs that, you know, we want. So, of course, we're going to talk about those skills. So I'm going to divide it into two parts. The video itself I'm going to divide into two parts. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the foundational skills. See, of course, we can talk about all of the skills, we can talk about all of the latest technologies, etc. But it is useless if you don't have the fundamental skills. I have seen a lot of videos on this topic and a lot of them just talk about the skills and they don't talk about the foundation of it. If you don't have the right foundation and you have all of the skills, you have AI, etc. You have everything in your resume. If you don't have the foundation correct, you will not be able to get a job. So first we're going to talk about the foundational skills and then we'll actually talk about the skills that the companies are looking for, the industry is looking for. So let's get straight into the foundational skills one by one. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is CSF, which is of course CS fundamentals. See, if you're wanting to become a software engineer, if you're an aspiring software engineer, there is no way you can do it without knowing what CS fundamentals are. And I don't mean just having an overview. Like we study in college, you know, we just memorize everything that, okay, this is in OS, this is kernel, this is this process. No, actually understanding what CS fundamentals are and why they're actually important for your work, you know, for development, so to speak. So, of course, you need to be good in object-oriented programming. You need to know one programming language. It can be anything. I would highly recommend learning an object-oriented programming language like Java, Python, even C++. There are many languages available. I'm not going to tell you which one to pick, but you need to know one programming language. You need to know concepts like object-oriented programming, the pillars, why it is important. You need to know debugging. How does debugging work? How do you debug your code? How do you actually write code? You need to be very handsy with code. Apart from that, you need to know system design, which is, of course, very important, especially nowadays. You know, every company is looking for someone who's good with system design. So these are some foundational skills that you need to have, right? That come under CS fundamentals. You need to be good with programming, hands-on coding. You need to be good with debugging. You need to know CSF concepts like OOP. You need to know system design. These are some things that will help you. And then you can learn other skills on top of it, okay? So the first thing that I really want you to focus on is going to be CS fundamentals, okay? So I'm including system design as a part of CS fundamental only. But of course, a lot of people don't consider system design as CSF, but let's say that it's also a part of CS fundamentals. So you need to be very good with CS fundamentals. Hi everyone, if you're someone who's looking to upskill themselves and land your dream job in 2026, then you must check out Star Agile. So Star Agile is an online learning platform where you can learn all of the relevant skills that the industry demands, like DevOps, data science, data analytics, and automation testing. So no matter what tech you're going for, you have a clear roadmap set out for you. And one thing that I really like about their training is that they have project-based learning. So you'll not be just learning theory, theory, and theory. You'll actually be getting your hands dirty while making industry-grade projects. And apart from that, you'll be getting certifications, which will be industry-recognized, like Microsoft certifications, which will add weight to your resume and help you in getting shortlisted. And on top of all of this, they will be helping you with placements. They'll be helping you with your resume preparation, mock interviews, so that you're fully prepared for the real interviews out there. And if you want to learn more about their courses or their teaching style, then you can check out the YouTube channel for completely free, where they've made a variety of videos for all of these aforementioned skills. You can check the channel out and you can check the platform out. The link for everything is going to be in the description box. So make sure that you go through that. And now let's get back to the video. After you're good with that, after you are confident with one programming language, you know how to debug code, you know how to write code, you're good with, you know, OOP concepts, you're good with basic system design concepts. Now we move on to the second foundational skills that is development. So this is a very important thing. 
see i know that there are multiple skills that you can learn but i still feel that everyone should learn some development now this development can be anything and it can be in any tech stack right you can go into full stack with mern you can go into full stack with java you can go into full stack with python django you can even go in full stack with you have golang you have many many things available right but i want you to pick one tech stack and be very good at it and of course i will always suggest full stack web development because i have i have seen a lot of companies hiring non stop for full stack okay so you can pick any tech stack of your choice you can pick whatever tech stack you think is in demand if you ask me i've seen majority of the companies work with java and javascript so of course on the basis of that you can learn javascript based frameworks you can learn react you can learn node you can learn spring boot you can even learn django you can learn you know golang there are many many tech stacks to choose from but you have to pick one and be a master of it you have to make projects in it and you have to be very good in it so this is just a fundamental i'm not even talking about something extraordinary that will give you a dream job this is just something that i feel is fundamental to being a software engineer okay so of course any development any tech stack you need to be a master of it so just to reiterate under fundamental skills what i've talked about is first you need to be good with cs fundamental which is the basics you need to have one programming language under your belt that you're very confident about and the second thing is of course learning development making projects and you know being very good in that so you can confidently say ki yes react is my forte yes spring boot is my forte yes django is my forte you need to have one tech stack that you're very 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 confident with okay so this is something that of course you need to be fundamentally good at there are many other things like you know communication skills the art of interviewing those things will always be there right so i'm not making a segment dedicated to that in the video but of course you guys already know you need to have good communication skills you need to be good at interviewing itself right so that is something you guys can work on in the parallel it is not something that you need to give dedicated amount of time i don't think that's needed right now we're done with the fundamental skills now we'll be talking about the skills that you need to learn above and beyond so you know you can of course make a name for yourself in the industry and you can create a demand for yourself in the industry so just to reiterate this is on top of the skills the fundamental skills that i just mentioned it's not a replacement it is on top of it i saw a lot of videos and they were saying just learn x y z you'll be fine no if without the fundamentals you're going to have a lot of difficulty in getting job you can do your own research right i do market research on a daily basis i look at job postings like you know hours at a day <laughs> because i make videos on it it's a part of my routine right so of course i know what i'm talking about so okay so you can take my credibility for that you can talk to me any time about you know why i'm talking about this or what credibility do i have to talk about this anyways i digress so what are the actual skills that you need first is ai so of course looking at ai it's just a couple of letters but there are many skills hidden behind or hidden inside the umbrella of ai you have many many things ai itself is such a field that people can spend decades in and still not learn everything so what do you need to learn in ai do you need to learn every algorithm do you need to learn every complex thing in ai no what i am saying and this is something that i also explain in my other videos this is what i also explain in my top mate calls to whoever comes to me right what i mean when i say you need ai skills is you need ai integration so in ai integration there are multiple parts of it first what i said whatever development you had right like the second part of fundamental skills which i talked about which was development that is one thing on top of that you need ai integration let me explain with an example let's say that i'm working a uh, i'm working on a full stack project where i'm using let's say any tech stack for backend i'm using spring boot node js any tech stack i'm using for backend now in that project i want you to integrate ai i want you to use ai which is going to be something as simple as you know making an api call to gemini api making an api call to open ai api or any other ai model or something like that and then you know retrieving the response in json format and then showing it to the user so basically your project needs to have ai integrated into it you can even have an ai chatbot you can have an ai analyzer you can have an ai you know anything but it needs to be integrated in your project so what i want you to learn whatever your project is whatever the back end is whatever the system is ai needs to be integrated in it ai needs to be a part of it so that is one thing other thing is prompt engineering so prompt engineering is something that a lot of people don't understand they think that what is there in prompt you know of course it's just prompt you have to give one thing you have to write one thing but there is a lot more than that there's a lot more to it than what you know is apparent to you or what you think so there are levels to it there are you know a level of skill that is needed 
to be good at prompting so of course prompt engineering is something that you can definitely go into and you can definitely you know learn so you can use different ai models to make your project do various things and of course that is going to give you a large variety of skills that other candidates will not have because other candidates will have basic projects you will have your projects and then you'll have ai integration in it so your project will of course be ai powered so this is the first thing that i want you to learn ai integration and i want you to learn basics of prompt engineering and a couple more things of course all of the things and the resources are going to be in the description box i forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video but don't worry all of the skills along with the resources are going to be in the description box now the second thing i want you to learn is cloud and devops fundamentals see again devops is a field of its own cloud engineering devops engineering is a field of its own we have devops engineers out there we have cloud engineers out there i'm not asking you to change your field again to reiterate to repeat myself I'm asking you to learn these skills on top of your fundamental skills. See, you have to understand first the importance of cloud. Of course, you know AWS, Azure, GCP, you've heard of these terms, right? And you may be seeing a lot of companies moving towards cloud. You may be seeing a lot of companies migrating towards cloud. So first thing is that you need to understand that there is a demand in the industry for people who have knowledge of cloud engineering and how cloud works. It may not be at a mastery level, but if you have cloud related things if you have devops related things in your resume it is going to help you because every company is going to have demand for cloud it's going to have demand for devops tools you have docker kubernetes you have ci cd you have jenkins you have so many things and if you know those tools if you've worked with them or even if you have familiarity with them it is going to help you because every company is going to have a requirement for them and of course, if you feel like this is something interesting, then you can do certifications. There are Azure certifications, there's AWS certifications, and these certifications actually help. Okay, I'm not, you know, uh, suggesting anything aggressively, but again, if you're interested, you can go towards that, right? But at least on a basic level, you need to know what cloud is, you need to know what DevOps is, and you need to know some basic skills, some core skills, so that if there's ever a requirement, you're not blindsided. See, companies will love a candidate who has the fundamental skills and then they also have experience with devops they also have experience with cloud and other things okay so this is something that you should definitely look out for now the next skill that i have for you is data manipulation of course data manipulation there's various levels to that you have data analysis you have data science you have data cleaning you have various various things that you can do to data under data manipulation Again, I'm not asking you to change your field. Of course, if you're interested, you can become a data analyst. If you're interested, you can go into data science. You can become a data scientist. That is fine. And of course, there is a bit of demand in this as well. But if you know the basics of data, if you're good with one data tool, you know, that deals with data, if you're good with one tool that is able to do data manipulation, and if you're able to put that in your resume, that is going to help you a lot in your career. So basic data manipulation is something that everyone should know. There are various things you can do with data. You have database management system, you have large data, you have big data, there's multiple, multiple things, right? Again, I'm not asking you to go knee deep into it or waist deep into it, but the basics of data manipulation or the basics of DBMS, everyone should be knowing okay so again this is something that i highly recommend all of you guys learn on the side or you know that just at least become aware of it so that again if there's ever a requirement for data you don't become blindsided and of course you cannot learn all of the skills right just to remind you of that you don't need to learn all of the skills but of course you can pick two or three of these skills and then you can go further into it according to your interest of course one person cannot do everything but these are the fields that if you even go deep into it it will help you in your future career as well so again, data manipulation is something that you guys should have one eye open for and you should try to get into this as much as possible. And you know, you can make few projects, you can get good at it and then add this skill to your resume. Now, the next skill that I have for you is cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is one of the most underrated fields out there because I have not seen that many people talking about cybersecurity. I have not seen that many resources for cybersecurity. And you know, influencers are selling everything, but nobody is out there selling cybersecurity. Nobody is talking about how important cybersecurity is, even though there's a major demand in the industry for people who have good knowledge of cybersecurity, for people who have who are cybersecurity experts, right? Again, you don't need to become an expert. 
but you need to know what cyber security is and of course again this is a field where you can do site certifications you can do you know courses you can do uh, there's various exams and all that you can do for cyber security if you are interested in it but even if you're not that interested in it i will still recommend you guys to learn at least the basics of cyber security what are some algorithms that are being used because even in your day to day work as a developer you will be working with cyber security you will be working somewhere with security right and of course cyber security is no longer just a choice it's something that is mandatory for every company to keep you know themselves secure so learn the basics of cyber security learn some basic algorithms learn some basic you know tools that people use and of course the resources are going to be in the description box so again this is something that you guys need or you guys can learn but again like i said every skill is not mandatory you can pick two or three out of them and then you can be aware of it one person cannot do everything all right now we come to the last skill which i feel is one of the most important skills that you need to get a good job or to you know make a name for yourself in you know the industry especially as a fresher in fact this skill is primarily for fresher and if you guys already don't know what i'm talking about i'm talking about problem solving see even now or even you know 5 10 years back from today and even 5 10 years into the future problem solving is always going to be there companies are always going to be looking for problem solvers for people who are good at problem solving now there are various level to problem solving of course you have dsa of course dsa the elephant in the room we cannot avoid dsa it is going to be there it's been there and it will be there in the future as well but apart from dsa we have various other things we have critical thinking we have analytical thinking we have business decisions you know we have various various things that come under problem solving and the companies want to know that the person that they hiring will be good at making decisions will be good at solving problems if there are any technical problems you know if there are any problems with the product or anything like that so of course if you become good at problem solving if you improve on your critical thinking your analytical thinking your decision thinking your business analytical skills then it is going to help you a lot okay and a great way of becoming good in problem solving is of course dsa you have dsa that will help you a lot in becoming problem solving expert and if you get a good rating in dsa then of course that shows credibility to the company that yes you're a knight you're a guardian you're an expert on cf you're a specialist on cf you're a candidate master on cf it is going to show to the company that yes you're good at problem solving and you're good at making decisions under time crunch on a technical note on a problem solving note of course right so this is something that you can look for apart from that of course you have critical thinking analytical thinking you have project based planning there are many many things there are books for that there are resources for that you can go into them if you're interested but dsa is something that i ask you guys not to ignore because every day i have students coming to me and they're saying ki tell us something we can do without dsa tell us a role we can get into without dsa without needing dsa don't try to run away from dsa don't try to run away from problem solving it is something that is going to make you a better software engineer and it is a skill that is going to last at least for the next few years at least for the next 5 to 10 years right and of course if you guys are freshers right now you need it right now everyone knows at this point that dsa is something that you will be needing if you want to get a good package okay so dsa and problem solving or just problem solving in general is a good skill to have to be added to your resume because i see a lot of people they don't have problem solving in their resume they have development they have everything but they don't have problem solving that should not be the case you need to show that you're good in problem solving to the recruiters to the interviewers to the person who's looking at your resume okay so these are all of the skills of course i talked about two fundamental skills and then after that i talked about five skills that are market relevant that are industry relevant so of course out of these five skills you don't need to learn everything you can pick two and three whatever you like whatever you're more inclined towards and then you can you know this at least be aware of it and you can keep learning as you go learning is a continuous process you can ne- you can never finish anything you can never say ki okay i'm good with data i've, I've learned everything in data you can never say i'm good with ai i've learned everything in ai no of course learning is a continuous process you have to be parallelly learning parallelly you know changing with the industry so this is a circling back to the start of the video movement right because what did i say tech industry is always changing so you're going to have to change with it and you're going to have to parallelly learn the things that the industry is looking for that the companies are looking for but as of now at this stage this much is enough so that's pretty much it if you have any doubts please feel free to contact me over linkedin over instagram or you can connect one to one with me over topmate or just leave a comment and i'll surely reply to you so any doubt feel free to ask feel free to leave a comment and let me see you guys in the next video